hello boys and girls um, today I'm gonna show you real quick a new asset of mine which is uh, a note map on overworld for like an you know old school RPG or something like this or something like um, what you see for example in Slays of Spire right so first of all we go into the folder your note map folder demo maps and note map and as you can see here this is just you know an example of course you can make it longer and longer however long you want let's first start play so we show you a little bit um, as you can see the note walker this is uh, the character that goes from note to note when you select something automatically always goes to the note that is currently um, where the player is currently at and the note is also crossed out um, and then if you hover over things of course it also works with uh, um, uh, with a gamepad you know with uh, uh, with a d-pad if you select it as you can see the color changes and if you select something the the note walker will automatically go there and then it will go to the next level the level combat is empty so you just see a black screen um this is basically it <laughs> um, but of course it has a lot of features and let's go through them a little bit first of all let's start with these notes itself if you select a note and you go to the details tab you see here's a bunch of stuff number one is the note ID so each note you have to give manually sadly um, a very specific note uh, a very specific ID and I just count it up you know zero one two uh, seven because this one is something I added later but it doesn't need to be in perfect order you know it can be this can be the note ID it doesn't really matter Okay, um, and then we have a data table, uh, and this is basically um, you always want to have the map nodes in here, this data table, um, and then you select from this data table what kind of node this is. For example, if we go to the middle one here, um, and we say, okay, here should be a boss. You go this, and as you can see, the icon automatically changes um, to the boss node. Um, or if it's a story or if it is um, you know a city or a normal encounter um, you can um, it will automatically change the icon and then once the play goes on it something will happen um, specific code I show you that later in the tutorial um, one thing important to note is we have these um, this uh, map notes and of course you can duplicate this um, and call this I don't know map notes map 2 or whatever and then change all these things in here uh, and then plug it in it's only important that it's the same data table type because each data table proponent know this but if you know, don't each data table is connected to a specific struct right um, and this struct needs to be the same uh, in this data table. That's why you can make several uh, map notes um, data tables and plug them in when you're in like different um, different uh, maps, for example. Maybe this is a node map on level one, uh, and then you go to the next level where you have a node map and stuff like this, you know? Kind of like Mario, where you have you know, the first level, and when you clear all the levels in the first map, you come to the next map. Um, but now let's take a look at this itself. Um, the map notes data table is very easy. Basically what you do is you say, okay, um, each of these is basically a category of something that can happen on a note. So you can always just add something and say, I don't know, um, puzzle. So, and then you add here like an icon. Um, and then you want to add the encounter data table and here's the same thing we have this encounter data table we can copy it and make a specific encounter um, we can make a data table that is specific for a certain type of encounter for example um, or just for a normally what I do is I make it for a whole map one encounter table okay and this uh, specific encounter table is also the same type of um, uh, the same type of data tables. So if you go here, as you can see, it's the same thing. Um, so you can 
you know, duplicate them and fill them up for uh, specific things. Um, if we go in here, you see we have here certain things. Um, this is something also that where you probably need to change it a little bit depending on your game. But the first few nodes should always be the same. The first is a note type. So do you want to open the level or maybe start a dialogue if it's just something where you talk maybe with other people or where you visit a city, you know, if that something specific happened before you enter a city and stuff like that. Um, and then we have um, gameplay tags, um, which basically means um, this is an encounter that has uh, an encounter easy and encounter normal tag. And when we search for randomly uh, for random events, it will search for these gameplay tags and then it will search for rarity tags. Okay, so you can and you can always add multiple and it doesn't look for both at the same time. It just checks if one of these tags fits. Okay, so it's not like it it searches for an event that has easy and normal tags. It just searches for you know, easy tags. Um, you have that here, right? Required tags for elite, for example, it is the, the, the random encounter we search in this uh, data table encounter uh, needs to be half an elite tag, right? And here are the tags. And rarity is the same. It will search for rarity. And if it doesn't find anything that fits, it will simply use like a, an encounter that fits the gameplay tags and then it ignores the rarity tags if it doesn't fit anything in the rarity that it rolled, okay? Um, and then we have level. So this is basically the level we are transitioning to from the node map. And dialogue and city is also, I have it only names here because there's no code for this in the node map. So here, if you want to change something, um, you can simply go to data, struct, and then go to F and counter. And you can simply change the variables here or add variables depending on what you need, right? And then later on where I show you where you have to code this stuff for your game, um, you can simply use the variables there, okay? Um, yes, uh, let's go back here. Um, if we go to node and now you can see we have map start node and this is basically just the node where the player starts when he opens the map for the very first time. So when he starts the game, right? And then we have connections, very straightforward. Um, from this node, you can go to these three map, uh, nodes, right? So you put them in these connection things. If you add them here, for example, we wanna add this, as you can see, a connection is made. Sometimes um, what might be, uh, you think it's a bug, but for example, here, when you move a node and this connection doesn't move, you just have to move the connection from where uh, the node from where the connection comes from and it updates, okay? And then last but not least, we have specific events. And here you also want to have uh, a DT encounter uh, tag, but what you can do is you can say, okay, I want a specific event play, okay? So for that, I created a specific encounter data table and you can just say here and this comes in. Here's important to note, when you put something in the specific event, it will override, uh, it will always go here and totally ignore what's here. The moment you have here a specific encounter input, everything that this one is used for is actually just the icon, okay? Just the icon from here is used for it. Everything else will be ignored because it will use a specific event, okay? That's uh, important to know. Um, all right, um, this is a note. And also, while we add it, we can open this note up. Um, outliner. Uh, because what I wanna show you now real quick is how to change the color of the icons. If you go to node, uh, core, materials, and then icons, here you can see that's the blue we see on the map. So if we change that to maybe something like, I don't know, a bit more reddish, Right, so now we have red notes. Um, and then if we go into the note itself, here's an event called have a note. At the very end, we see here set vector parameter value. And this is the value you set um, 
what you want the color to be when you hover over it. So now if I hover over it, it's blue because I set blue in the BP node. Okay, this is how you change the colors. Uh, let's change that back real quick to bluish. Make uh, it here, I don't know. Hmm. Put it back to yellow. Um, okay, so these are the encounters and they are randomly chosen. Um, here you say what tags in, yes, we had that. Rarity, I come to that as well, where you can set up the rarity. Um, and now first let's talk about this notewalker real quick so we have it out of the way. When you start the map it automatically goes to the node that is currently active where the player is, right? It, it snaps there automatically so you don't need to position this perfectly. Um, if you go in here as you can see here this is a walk event and if you decide to put in here your character for example then you will tell your character around here that he should uh, switch to a walk animation okay um, and now if we go to the map manager here's basically where the magic happens um, all you need so so here's basically where you load from your save game file um, and what's important to note here is that you only need to um, save two variables, the soft node ID and the current node ID. The current node ID is basically where the player is at the moment. Let's put this, for example, to two, right? So he's at the second node and that is the ID. So if we go here, we see, oh, this is node ID two. So the player will be here. Suck, this works. But as you can see, it's not crossed out. And that is basically what this solved node ID is. The solved node ID is basically um, tracks where the player went. So you basically have a trail of all the nodes that are crossed out where the player can see, okay, I was there. So if we start now, as you can see, this is crossed out and this is crossed out because it's a solved nodes ID. And if I would do something now like say, uh, just so you know, understand, if I add another one, um, let's say four, save it, play it. And now you see here, we haven't been there, but because it's in there, um, it's crossed out. Um, also, let's put this back to normal before. Um, you don't need to worry about setting this up because all of this is already in the code that it adds to the array and stuff like this. All you need to know here is, okay, here you load these two variables from your safe game or from the game instance, for example, if it's just a persistence game and you don't really have a safe game, just save it to the um, game instance. And then here is basically where you save it. Okay, so these red blocks is where you save it and um, where you basically load and save. Okay, and then we are here. Here's basically what's happening is that here's what's happening once a node is reached. As you remember, if we go to the encounter, we have this node type open level or start dialog. Here is where you cope that. At the moment, of course, it's only in their open level, right? It uh, takes a level from the randomly chosen event or if this here specific event, remember, if this is valid, it goes here. If it's not valid, here it's a chosen event, right? So specific event and randomly chosen event. So you have to code that twice, but you can just copy paste it later on. Um, yeah, oh, like I said, open level is the only thing that works at the moment because visit city or start dialogue is just examples, right? So if you if you want to have the player, maybe when he reaches here, just have a quick dialogue and it can continue. Um, and then what we have is, uh, da, 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 da. oh, you know, uh, it's important to know that if we go to data enumerations, here's the patch uh, open level. If you want to have something else, you just add it here and it will show up, okay? Um, Yes, this is that. Um, map manager is where you code everything. Um, 
randomly chosen events. You can check it out here how this works. And now let me show you one last thing. And this is data table rarity map. Okay. Um, what's important here is basically if you open this up here, it goes from the bottom up. So we basically how this is calculated, just so you know it uh, when you set up these values. It uh, rolls the number from 0 to 100 and then it checks from the bottom, okay, cursed is okay. Is the number we rolled under 5, then it's cursed rarity. If it's under 15, it's legendary. If it's under 25, it's epic. You know, if it's under 60, it's uncommon. So um, basically, you know, the moment some of these is met, it will... Uh, do something it doesn't check for the upper one and uh, common is always 100 because when everything else fails it's common and like I said if you don't set up any rarities it will completely ignore this and just choose randomly from any event that uh, required that that has the required gameplay tag um, one last thing now actually really the last thing what you need to do is go to project settings, uh, gameplay tags, and here gameplay tag list, you want to plug in the node category and the uh, rarity tags. Um, these are important because they're used in these other ones and if they're not in here, they will not be found. Okay. Um, once you have that, you're good to go and you can start making your little overworld. Hope that helps and um, see you next time.